not with this age. I don't. They don't necessarily have the boogers, but they gonna pick. They gonna pick it, pick it, pick oh, it. And, it. <laughs> and the thing is, something to just say, look at so and so, and I look over there, and they just like this, and I say, go watch your head. Welcome back to the show, Friday night. We got Miss Baker of MissBakersKPrep.com. And you can find her on Instagram with a really long name, but I'm not going to spell it out. But it is Miss Baker's Kindergarten Prep, right? Yes. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. And tonight we are discussing early childhood education and parental involvement in childhood education, right? That's cool with you? Yes, that is cool with me. Okay, so we'll just jump right into it. You know what I'm saying? By the way, this is Libby's tutor, so Miss Baker, she it. So <laughs> let me ask you this, right? Um, okay. Off the rip. Typically, as a parent, the first thing you teach a child from an academic standpoint is like their ABCs and their one, two, threes. Is there anything else that you suggest we as parents implement into our child's learning schedule early on? I would say just building vocabulary. Um, don't once they're able to understand the simple commands of no stop. Don't have regular conversations with them. Cut the baby talk and have um, those conversations with them to help build that vocabulary. Um, taking them different places because exposure is the first part of learning exposing them to things um that they never seen outside of the house outside of school just taking them different places so that they can get that exposure so yes the abc's one two three just that's the fundamentals of school and that part of education but really the exposure to the different cultures and different things that's happening in life is the the best way to go and just having those conversations because they always ask them questions. So, oh, yeah. you know, they see it. You tell them about it, you know, give them the simplest response that you can, but just tell them mm -hmm. about it and then they'll build on that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So take them places, vocabulary building, simple answers that they can understand, right? That's it. Okay, cool. So other than, this is something I've wondered for a long time, right? Okay. As a as an educator, right? How do y'all feel about the ABC song? Like, do y'all feel like the song? Is there like a better way or another way that y'all prefer that we teach our kids the ABCs, or is the song like the cream of the crop? The the song is not the cream of the crop. It's just something that we have been doing. It's just something. It's like if the wheel isn't broken, don't fix it. Type thing. It's something mm -hmm. that. It's been passed along just because you know the ABC song does not mean that you know your ABCs because everybody can follow a tune. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Everybody can follow a tune, but actually being able to recognize that letter when you see that letter without it being an ABCD format, if you can't recognize them outside of that, it's just it's 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 a nice intro, but don't let that be your base of teaching letters. Okay, so if that's not the base, because I'm pretty sure that's like 90% of our base coming up, how should we do it? Should we break? Should we focus on like one letter at a time? Should we focus on a group of A, B, and C? You know, how should we go about it, in your opinion? There, there are different opinions on how you should go about it. Some people say introduce lowercase letters first. Some people mm -hmm. say introduce uppercase letters first. Um there's one called the Jan Richardson um, letter learning, and it starts with how the letters are structured. So the first letter that's taught is C because it's just a curve, and then you go from mm. C to O because you just close up that curve, and then you go down to A because you're just adding a line. And so you're teaching mm. the letters, but you're also teaching how to write them in lowercase form, and they all come, you know, they all have sets based on that primary letter. You can teach them that way um, or start by teaching them the letters in their name because those are the ones that they're going to see all the time. So start teaching them the letters of their name. Start with the first letter. 
or if it's a short name do the whole name if it's a long name breaking into parts um but i would say those from my experience have been the best ways in um introducing and letter retention letter recognition okay cool my mother said to tell you how hey <laughs> <laughs> i tried to get her to uh I tried to get her to get an Instagram account to watch it live, but she's using my sisters and they're streaming it through the TV or something. I don't know. So. Okay. How you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh is, it, is that your mom? That's my mom. Hi, mom. Design buddy. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> we love your daughter. She's the greatest. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's your opinion on implementing play into education for younger kids like is that something that you think there should be a lot of a minimal amount a moderate amount like what's your opinion on that it's a balance there's structured because mm -hmm. you know they're curious and they want to explore on their own and then they well, excuse me they're structured where you know you're actually teaching them something and then there's unstructured where they're just kind of learning on their own um it's definitely it's definitely a part of their learning how they play because think about it when they go in the kitchen they're like they have that little kitchenette and they oh i'm slicing up the tomato and they're they're building that they're building that skill like they're playing but they're also right. recognizing things that they see in their actual kitchen and they're mimicking and that's one of the base forms of learning mimicking what you see um so it is a it is a large deal you just again some of it is structured so you're you have an end goal Mm -hmm. You have an end goal in mind, and some of it is unstructured, where it's just whatever happens, happens. So right. That's right. how. That's how I see it. That's really uh, how that I makes, see it. That made me think about when we got Libby to uh, like the kitchen set, and she got the little wooden knife, and you're trying to teach her like you, you know, even though it's all fake, she's not gonna cut herself. You're like, you want to make sure you don't cut cut your finger. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so teaching that skill so that when she is using real items, she mm -hmm. knows this can cut me. Mm -hmm. Right. Even with so, um, sorry. Nah, go ahead. This your show. I'm just oh. talking. Okay. What you want. <laughs> Even with um the smaller ages, like two year old, when they're starting to feed themselves, getting games where they have like a bowl and a spoon and put some pom poms or something in it, and they just practice scooping so that when they're you know they're gonna get tired of you feeding them, they are practicing that skill because later on they're gonna be feeding themselves. So that scooping activity is going to help them learn how to feed themselves so they plan but it's going to be a skill that they're going to use very very soon right 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 i'm with you that makes sense that you know we got libby and finn you know mm -hmm. my oldest daughter she she 18 she'll be 19 and shit so she she could okay. um what are your thoughts on like positive reinforcement and rewards especially when a child doesn't necessarily get an answer correct or say they're struggling with a word or, or a math problem um, I'll start it with the quote, quote that I just learned that, you know, that I made some adjustment to. You used to hear practice makes perfect, but no, mm -hmm. practice makes improvements. So, um, mm -hmm. I use positive reinforcement. I'm very big on it. I love rewards. I love to have fun. You know, we do different things um, when they get their 50 points um, because it just keeps them excited. It's like, oh, I'm working towards something. I know I'm going to get to do what I want. I got to figure this out. I know it's going to take some time, but um, I know I'm going to keep working on it. But you still deserve to be rewarded for your hard work, even though you're not at the end of your project process yet you still mm -hmm. just you know you want a little treat for your hard work <laughs> yeah so that's that's why i think positive i mean negative is not gonna get you anywhere because then they're gonna shut down mm -hmm. and it's like you're not gonna get what you want out of them it's kind of like you gotta give it's a give and take so if i'm giving negative reinforcement all the time it, i'm not gonna get the response i want then we it's they not gonna have a good memory about working on this this set of say we're doing math as fractions and we have a bad experience. They not gonna want to do fractions no more because we had a bad experience. Oh, I feel a certain way about fractions now. So I just try to keep it positive as much as possible. Mm. So that that kind of makes me wonder too. Do you have you know? Is it good to have maybe like a scale of rewards like you know? If you get it, then you get I don't, the ultimate 
prize or whatever it is for that particular course of study. And if you get, the, you know, just for your hard work, you get something that's not the ultimate, but something for your your hard work. Right. Yes. There's definitely definitely levels to the treats. Um, for example, like during our tutoring sessions, you know, if they finished all the problems, like if it was something that was like really hard for them, um, if they finished this problem, I'm like, okay, I'll let you go a couple minutes early. That's an incentive because sometimes it's like, because I go over or we're going to go to the time. And so that's a small incentive. However, when they get those 50 points, we get to do something big. So mm. I would say yeah that I would say those are how I do my levels um of incentives with tutoring. Um as an in class teacher, um we do a reward system and um if they the goal is to stay on twenty all day. You stay on twenty all day, you get to go to the treasure box. That's where the toys are. Mm. If you go below twenty, you know, if you get in the blue or if you're just 19, 18, I had to maybe talk to you maybe one or two times and you in the blue, at the end of the day, you can just get a piece of candy. No, you cannot go to the toy box. You can get you a small piece of candy. If you fall below um, 18, you don't get nothing from me. We we got to work on it. We got to work on it because I don't want you on 17 and below. I want you on blue and purple. So... Those that's my levels in the classroom as well, and I see such a better response. Um, they be so excited. Did I get 20? Do I get to go to the treasure box? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. If you didn't get 20, you can get a piece of candy. If you want 17, don't touch nothing. Go ahead, get your book bag, and let's go. That's how <laughs> it's gonna go. So, yes. So, um, you, um, how many kids like do you have in your classroom? And I was wondering. Is it just you as a teacher, or do you? Is it like multiple teachers in your classroom? Oh well, this has been um, a different year. This is my first year teaching kindergarten. Um, when we started out, I had an instructional assistant, and she, she retired in September. So from mm -hmm. September to basically last week, I was majorly in there by myself with sixteen, well, fifteen, sixteen students, um, and. Some people may say 16 kids, oh, that's nothing. And, you know, some may be like, ooh, 16 kids, that's a lot. And, you know, if they don't want they they move around. You know, it's a lot of emotions. It's a lot of different personalities, you know, and you're trying to make sure everybody stay focused while also teaching a lesson and you in there by yourself. It was a struggle. So this week I've had an instructional assistant, and it's just been a smoother week. That's why I'm so happy today because it's just been a, a much smoother week having an extra person in there, whether it, whether it's nine, eight, seven. I mean, just having that extra person in there. So if you need to step out, you can step out and get some fresh air. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, what's your opinion on the importance of children learning in an actual classroom as opposed to like other learning environments say like maybe homeschool or if you take them to the library or even if they're out somewhere that could be considered like recreational like a playground or something do you feel like there's a benefit to one over the other or no my my opinion now from what i'm seeing now what we're living in now i would say no to public school i would just say no to public like that public school that school setting I would say no to because education can take place anywhere. A school is just a building. Um, you go to school to teach, you, I guess, to learn structure, some type of structure outside of your house. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as, like, education and building knowledge, that can happen anywhere. Like, and homeschooling, I think that's a great idea. Or, you know, being in one of the groups where you guys, y'all, you know, as long as you, you're getting that education, getting those credits, I feel like that's a great idea right now. I know I do not feel like public school is the thing because there are a lot of flaws and it's like, what flaw do I fix to help? What flaw can I fix to help? And you don't know which flaw you can fix to help. So it's like, okay. It make you kind of want to run from it. Okay. We got a question from the audience. I am okay. just me underscore always. Her name is Melissa. She says, what's your biggest struggle as a teacher? My biggest struggle as a teacher is um, preparing more in advance. 
I'm a he big like procrastinator. Like, not choking somebody's mama. <laughs> <laughs> not choking somebody's mama. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. Who sometimes I sometimes that there's that feeling too, but um I'm a big procrastinator and that is a struggle for me because um when you have when you are working with little ones, you need they got to have something to do because if you give them too much free time, they cannot handle it and then you it's it's chaos. And so sometimes I fall off and then I see it in my classroom or I see it with, who, with the, whoever I'm working with because it didn't go as well as I know it could have went. And I, I, I'll be feeling like that was on me. Um, so mm. being a better, I'm getting better at it. I'm definitely getting better at it, but not procrastinating, like going ahead and just having everything laid out, at least um, some type of really good outline and then I can fill in the spaces as I go but have it at least an outline so that we make the best of our time and and things like that. So oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um so you so, so you got sixteen kids in your class, right? Mm-hmm. And you ain't gonna have to name names, just for something that mm -hmm. I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. Do you have what up, right? Do you have like that one kid that always has like the little snot Right here, or like the boogers. <laughs> um, not with this age. I don't. They don't necessarily have the boogers, but they are gonna pick. They are gonna pick it, pick it, pick oh, it. And, it. <laughs> and the thing is, something to just say, look at so and so, and I look over there, and they just like, this. and I say, go wash your hands, and they just know to get up and go wash their hands. And I'm gonna be like, and I'm gonna watch you too. Twenty seconds. I say, count to twenty or say your ABCs and I'm going to watch you they look back and I be watching them like because listen guys we are, you already know we're in we're in coronavirus because that's how they talk about it you already know that and you want to sit here and you know you like to touch though so I have to keep reiterating that mm -hmm. listen y'all the germs so it'd be so funny even when they call for sneeze they'll look straight at me because I'm looking at them to make sure that your nose or whatever was covered. And if it was not, you need to go wash your hands because you're going to want to come hug on me and all of that. And listen, I don't, I, I try to be nice. I'm very nice about it, but I'm going to let you know, come on guys, let's keep the germs to a minimum. <laughs> all right, cool. So, my wife said she wants to know is virtual is virtual teaching slash tutoring for your full time goal, and she said you need to promote that business. Yes, I'm. Listen, I'm really, really, really pushing myself more than I have ever had to be a full time tutor in my business. Like, yes, that is a definitely a goal for me. Um, is going full time. I tried it. I tried it last year and then I got scared and went and, you know, got a full time and just did it part time again. But I feel like this upcoming year, I'm going to be serious about going full time. Yeah, you, you should. You do a good job. Quick plug www.missbakerskprep.com. Um, for the YouTubers, this will be, that will be in the description box below. Um, if you, are watching this live and you don't follow Miss Baker, follow Miss Baker. If you follow Miss Baker and you don't follow me, I mean, you don't have to, but it'd be nice to for you follow. Hello. <laughs> and we'll get to uh, a couple more from the audience. Honey Wordsmith wants to know, do you have books in your classroom? Do I have books in my class, such like my books or just books in general? I guess she just means books in general. I mean, your book too. That's what I'm curious. Is your um, book in your classroom? The crazy thing is, it is not, and I'm going to put it in there. And I'm like, the it takes time for some things to come to me, and I'd be like, why you have not done that yet? Because um, it's so simple. Right. It'd be the simplest things. It's the simplest things. We do have books in our classroom, and um, we have a new curriculum, and they brought in more books, and then um, the parent, the PTA, they donate books. So we have plenty of books in our classroom. Um, but we always accept more. Um, definitely more of diverse culture, like, you know, different characters and different um, languages. I would love to see more of those. Um, but as far as, like, the standard books, yes, we have those. 
Okay, cool. Um, Red Shoe1234 said one thing that she likes is that you let the kids use their imagination. So that's a, that's a compliment. Thank you. And um, Melissa said, with so many teachers leaving the profession, what changes do you think are necessary to keep them? Pay. That's going to always be the first answer. Um, because when you go in, you're not just going in as a teacher. You're going in as a teacher counselor. You're a doctor. You are um, your psychiatrist at certain points. Like you, you're a DJ. You hold many roles when you enter the classroom. You're just not going in there to teach some content and think they're going to go home. Like it's, it's a bigger deal than that because they may come in one day and they're not feeling it. And you still got to... You still got to go on. You still got to go on with them not feeling it. Imagine three not com coming in, not feeling it. You got 16 kids, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So understand it. And I, I feel like sometimes when people leave the classroom, they feel like they forget what the classroom is like. And then mm -hmm. they pile on more stuff. Like you don't realize what's already, how we already have to get through the day and you're already adding something else on. And then next week you want me to change that. It's just so many changes and it's not on time. It's, it's not as, um, tell me, a, give me a little bit more time. Give me a little bit more time. Like don't just throw stuff on me. And then if, you know, I don't like that. I just, it's just not for me. I don't like stuff to be thrown on me. I like to be prepared for it. And, some, and that's like a big miss. That's a big miss these days. Um, yeah, that's my opinion on it. Okay, cool. That's a, that's a good answer. <laughs> um, this is something that I've wondered, right? And you teach kids on a day-in, day-out basis. Um, how much do you think race plays in terms of a child's ability to learn and be successful? Um, race as in skin color? Yeah, but or... I mean, I, I also, yes, but I also understand that, uh, you know, culture, the culture from which someone comes plays a role too. So you can be of a particular skin color, but come from a culture that's more akin to another skin color. And you mm -hmm. would probably end up experiencing the same thing, you know, so right. I was wondering, you know, cause there's kind of this debate about, you know, whether or not black kids can learn at the level that white kids can. And if standardized tests are racist and all of that good stuff. And so I just wondered what, you know, what your opinion was like, do you think that race or you say race or culture plays a role in their ability to learn? Um, to a certain extent, yes, it does. It does play a role um, to, again, what you're exposed to, what's around you, what does your, your environment look like? How do your parents talk to you? How do your parents communicate to you? Um, um, what was it like in, in that, in those, in that age three, like when you really did, started to learn and be able to communicate a little bit better um where were you at were you at grandma's house or were you at like a more structured environment when did your structure start basically when did it start mm -hmm. i think that's the biggest thing when did it start and is it consistent um because in my classroom i have friends of many races and um I don't see, I, I have, you know, you have your levels of students, you know, based on, you know, again, what you can tell who, who, um, who's been worked with at home or some, you know, mm -hmm. before they came to school, you can tell that. So I would say it's more of a cultural thing mm -hmm. more than a skin thing, but yes, the skin thing too, but I feel like culture is on top of that. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, culture culture is heavy. You know what I'm saying. Mm. And but I, you know, I also think in America, it's, I think it's just humanly natural to segregate or disperse into your group. Mm -hmm. And because of, because it's America, right? Like black people typically live near black people, and then there's a black culture and white people and Asians and everybody else. So, but I, I'm with you. I think it's more so culture. If we were ranking mm. them, um, question from the audience. Do you see a difference in a child's ability to be successful 
in school based on a two parent household well versus a single parent household now hold on give me a second right that was actually my next question right? okay and she saw my question so i think she <laughs> snuck in and stole my thunder but that's neither here nor there so oh. you, you, um, the floor is yours I do, I do, and again, to a certain extent, and I don't, I, it depends on the family situation. Uh -huh. It depends on their situation and how much, you know, time they have, again, to work with your child. You know, if you are at work all day, you know, you have long shifts and stuff like that, you know, you're the head of the household, you got to pay bills and stuff like that, and so you, your child is at school, and that's really the, the bulk of their learning um then if they don't have again if they don't have any outside support outside of school it's going to be a little harder it's going to okay. be, be a little harder unless they you know they got it all up here unless right. they got it unless they go through it like that it's going to be harder versus if you have a, and even with the two-parent household what if both of them are working right so I would say it again just depends on the family's dynamic, like how do things roll. I don't think that I don't feel like that would play play a big difference whether it's a two parent or one parent. It just depends on how much time you have to devote to your child's education. Like that's just okay. my opinion. I do not have children, so I can't fully I cannot fully answer that question. Um, but just from what I see um, I don't feel okay. like it. You can have fans. You want fans? <laughs> no, we'll put her in a ready. box and poke some holes in it and ship her down there to you. I'm not ready. And y'all can, can fight, duke it out, fight it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, Lil says, so a parent's involvement makes a difference. Um, One of the questions that I had that kind of ties into your answer is, what do you think is like a good amount of time maybe per day or per week for parents to be involved in their child, your child's education? Like, should we use it maybe like we're going to set aside an hour a day after school, two hours, or how does that work in your opinion? At minimum, at minimum, to work, like to work on it, to like build educational skills. Mm -hmm. Like just working. I mean, I, them, like, I, want my, I, want, I mean, I want my kid to be the, if not the best, I want my kid to maximize their potential. Okay, I would say at least like an hour to an hour and a half, or if you or like break it up into sessions or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. and again, it's all in how you play it. Like you could spend the rest of the afternoon with them. It's just you know they may not even realize they learned something because you're just doing a whole bunch of different things. And again, just having that conversation or having them more involved and hands on in whatever you're doing. Um, so I don't really, I would say a minimum 20 minutes, you know, because that's mm -hmm. um, what they want students. Well, when I'm working with my students, um, they 20 minutes a day reading. So if you're sitting 20 minutes a day and you're reading what you tell, you've exposed them to some vo some vocabulary um, today. That's the minimum. If you want to take it through the rest of the day, you know, do so. Right. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Y'all show us some love in the, in the comment section. Click the hearts, all of that good stuff. I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me if they could buy a badge. I'm trying to build this thing, you know what I'm saying? If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to my channel, tap the bell. All of that good stuff. Um, As question. if I'm going to say I'm from a single-parent household. Yes, I am. Oh, yes, and so that's why I'm that. like... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. What's, what's your mother's last name? Blue. <laughs> I'm, I apologize, Miss Blue. The comments just scroll, and I was going to say that you said that she was from a single parent household because we wanted to give you your props because <laughs> you raised a beautiful, intelligent young lady, and we wanted to give you all the love and accolades that you deserve for that. So, cool Thanks. beans. Um, so, I'm a guy who kind of keeps up with the news and the politics that percolate all across the country. And one of the debates that have kind of popped up is how much involvement parents should have, how much say parents should have in what's taught in schools, right? So 
how much say do you think parents should have in what their kids are taught in schools? That's kind of hard to say from a pre-K level because we really teach like the basics of everything you're going to need to know um, mm -hmm. before getting to the higher grades. So from a kindergarten standpoint, I don't really have much to say on that. But um, as like the older grades, like that mm -hmm. content, um, I feel like that's a great idea to have input on what your children are learning, like join the PTA and the school improvement team plan and all of that. Like, yes, put some in, have some input so that if there is something that you don't like or you want to, you know, complain about it, you like, you know, at least you did something about it. Don't just say there's a problem and you not be like, I want to be a part of the solution. So be a part of it. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Mm. I'm with you. So Melissa wants to know, if you weren't a teacher, what would you like to be doing? If I wasn't a teacher, what would I like to be doing? Well, I love to sing and write songs. So, you know, if somebody ever picked one of my songs up, it's up. But um, I really just, I don't even know. I like to do a little bit of everything. Like, I like to do everything. So I can't even honestly pinpoint and say what I would be doing if I wasn't um, teaching. But it would most likely be some type of form of teaching, like of some form of type. I'm going to be educating somebody. Mm, okay. Um, technology, right? How do you think technology affects younger kids' ability to learn? Do you think technology improves their, you know, ability and capacity to learn, or do you think it kind of hurts? Um, too much of it hurts, of course. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's very beneficial, and, and if you use it right and use it properly and you're using the, the right things on it, and there are some great apps and softwares and different things coming out to, like, enhance education, you know, so I'm I am pro technology, but um, I, you you can't forget the the basics and going back to the pen and paper. Y'all still want you to have some nice handwriting. Nope, write that again. Those letters are flying. <laughs> Put them on the ground. But um, yeah, I feel like just limit. You gotta limit it. You gotta limit it. Um, because. You may it may start out as you doing work, then it turned to you doing videos, and then you up there, you know, they didn't put something in the video you're not supposed to see. Um, so yeah, just living in it and having both, having that pen and paper. That I mean, I know they say don't do worksheets and all of this, but look, worksheets get it done. Mm -hmm. Worksheets um, help you build your your skill. They help you get that practice that you need, like. Worksheets, get it done, writing it down, like writing it down and remembering it. It's like something is the it's a, it's a connection. You can't really get that when you're typing or doing something on the screen all the time. Mm, OK, Um, I need somebody in the comments to do me a favor. I need you to put www.missbakerskprep.com so that I could pin the comment. I meant to do it at the beginning, but Miss Baker jumped on as soon as I jumped on. And I was like, oh, shoot. Like, it's like a boxing match. Oh, shoot. I wasn't That's sure. I wasn't so, sure. Yeah, everybody does that. As soon as I call them, I'm like, I'm about to go live. As soon as I jump on, they be like the first two people on. But I want somebody to put it in the comments so I can pin it so that people can see it. Um, but do you incorporate uh, your singing and songwriting into your class at all? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, especially when um i try not to fuss especially when i'm trying not to fuss and um that that one is just up out that seat again so i just be like such and such go sit down put your stuff together like i just like make it to a song they start laughing but they start doing what i'm asking them to do and i just have to like do it like that um and that usually works um, and then I also, when this school year started, I did, um, 
I made up an affirmation for my kids to say. And so mm -hmm. we say it every morning and we have little hand movement with it, movements with it. And so like we've done it every day and to the point that I'll be like, who's going to lead our affirmations this morning? And they'll get up at the front and they'll do it. And um, the whole class will go to it. And then after we'll say our good mornings to each other and different things like that. Um, so that, that, yeah, I do incorporate it a lot. I do. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, how can parents deal with the frustration that comes with helping children learn? How can we help when we get frustrated? I mean, like, what can we do to kind of, like, do we take a break? Do we, like, uh, go play for 10 minutes? What, yeah, what take a break. Um, Or they like, you know, kids like to be involved in what you're doing. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. they want to do their own thing while you're doing your own thing. No, they want to do what you're doing. So get them involved in what you're doing. Like when we did um, the patterns and Miss Lillian and Liberty were in the kitchen and they did the peppers because mm. you were cooking spaghetti, having her involved, she learned, she did her homework, and y'all, you know, you were together cooking dinner. So, you know, that was family involvement time, and she also did her homework. Um, so it just be things like that we don't even really realize or – um. Yeah, just and and yeah, take put some time on it. If you know, okay, now you're starting to do such and such now. Um, or they may walk away from you before you walk away from them. So yeah. Okay. So can we hear the affirmation? Oh, it goes, um, I love me, all of me from head to hold toe. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. When you do it with your kids real quick. When you do it with your kids. Do you say like a part of it and then they say it? Uh-huh. Okay, I'll, I'll be the kid. Okay, so I love me. I love me. All of me. All of me. From head to toe. From head to toe. And in between. And in between. I'm kind and smart. I'm kind and smart. And helpful too. And helpful too. And I will try. And I will try. And everything I do. And everything I do. And then we say, say good morning to your friend or bonjour me or me or uh, is, some type of language good morning we'll do. And then, you know, then we go back to our seats, get our day started. Um, and they really enjoy it. And I love to see them do it, especially when I don't have to lead it or anything. I don't say nothing and they lead it. I love it. I love it. So. Oh, sometimes they lead it because they, they mm -hmm. know it by heart now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, that's tight. I'm about to do that in the mirror every morning. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, so if they be like, I can't do it or something at the, like in the middle of that, I said, uh-uh, because we said I have formations this morning and you said I would try everything I do. Oh, yeah. Mm. So they know. They know Miss Baker. She, I love them with all my heart. Like they are my kids from eight to three. I'm going to treat them like my kids from eight to three. Right. Um. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, have you had ever had a negative experience with any of their parents? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. You um, want to tell us about it to the to, to the degree that you can? Yeah, I actually can. And it, it's, and it was really, it's really been the only one that's happened thus far, um, really this year. Um, and it, and the thing is, it didn't even have anything to do with me. So one okay. student overheard, I guess a teacher outside, when we go outside, she overheard others saying, why send your child to school? She's sick or something like that. So she went home and told her mother that. And so I get a long message you know, giving a rundown, you know, that's not something to say around children. Um, and that it may not even be coronavirus. There are other things that can make you sick and stuff. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, because I haven't even said nothing. I mean, I know there's other things going on than coronavirus. And also, you know, it's kindergarten. They're going to mm -hmm. cough, they're going to sneeze. And, it's, uh, and um, the student told her, the child told her mom that Miss Baker don't like when you copy her class. No, I do not. I do not like when you copy my class. However, I'm going to tell you how to properly 
cover your germs so that you do not get other friends sick so that we not having to shut down the classroom we out of school i say y'all want to be out of school no i'm like okay then so we have to do these things and so i tell them that i tell them that especially if you know we all in each other's face you know sometimes we cannot be six feet apart so if we all in each other's face all the time we got to understand the germ you know so um and I just, you know, before I responded, I had to, you know, let the principal know that, you know, there was this apparent is feeling some type of way. And I understand mm -hmm. her level of aggression. The principal was like, I don't. But I was like, I understood her level of aggression because she feels like her child is being talked about. You know, she felt mm -hmm. like the teacher was talking about her child. So, you know, I get it from that standpoint. However, that that, you know, that wasn't even a full story or maybe what even really happened. So it's like. I came professional. I was like, I'm sorry you're feeling that way. Um, again, this is kindergarten. We know that these things happen. Um, like always, I communicate if there's anything with your child, anything going on with your child, I always communicate that directly to you versus why would I why would I even have time to go communicate that with somebody else or sit and gossip about that? No. Mm -hmm. No. I know this is kindergarten. I know this is the world that I'm in and I have never come off that way. So for that response, I feel like it was it was it was too quick to judge, but I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. I'm sorry you felt that way. But we're going to move on because you right. know. And that's how it went and you know we haven't really had any problems since then, but that was that was that That's oh, how okay. she was feeling that day. No, she could have been, you know, having a bad day too. Yeah. Oh. So, Poetic Jada said, "We used to say chicken wing to my class, so they would know to cough in their arm." I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. I like chicken that. Chicken wing, that. chicken wing, hot dog and bologna. Yeah, they sing that song. That's Libby joint. Oh that's man, we, mm -hmm. I should. I wish. I, I wish I could get Libby up here because I know she wanted to talk to you, but <laughs> she downstairs. So, um, oh. if anybody on here can call Libby on her iPad and tell her to come up here. She could jump in, but I can't leave. So, um, what was the next question I wanted to ask you? Oh, so I know you teach kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. But I know that, um, especially with math and stuff like that, certain educational techniques change over time. So are there any ways for parents to learn the new processes that children are going to be learning, like, say, like Common Core math and stuff like that? Um, I would say have that talk, you know, with your teacher, with the, your child's teacher about, you know, what the curriculum looks like, um, what math they're using. Um, I know at our school we're using Eureka Math. Um, I like it. I mean, it's long drawn out. Um, but it teaches the concept and they, it makes sure that the students know the concept is just long drawn out. Like, I feel like if they grasp it, then let's move on. Um, I would say also just um, finding out the type of software apps and um, intervention resources that the school may use um, when they're doing math and things like that and using those at home. One that I use in tutoring is education.com because it's, it's um, it correlates with Common Core. Um, so that's why I use it because it's correlating with the standards that I know that they're learning in school. Um, let's see. And then it's still really the basics. Like you still really just go back to the basics. Um, the long division, how you really learned it um, mm -hmm. is how they're learning. They're just trying to learn it more mentally, but it's okay to go through the process. Like you can okay. still show them the process that you learned. They're trying to do things more mentally and, group this together add this together like yeah it's i would say do teach them the way you learn okay you can't teach something you don't know so teach them the way yeah. you learn because they still gonna get the same <laughs> answer right so and when they get our age well there's an age gap between me and you but when they get to a particular <laughs> age all they're gonna do is pull out their phone and do the math on their phone anyway. exactly you just want to make sure they understand what it is that they're putting into the phone exactly exactly because they do have the app now where you can scan the problem and it'll solve it for you like nope oh really that's why I, nope mm -mm. so mm. that's why i'd be like especially with um 
my little friend who I see on thir Tuesdays and Thursdays, I tell mm -hmm. him to put that note. You have to write it out. You have to do it. Write it out. Write the multiplications out. And we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep going over it and over and over. Nope. Do not use your calculator. You want to know how to do it without the calculator. Because sometimes you're not going to have the calculator. Right, right, right. Okay. So um, one more question. Then we're going to get into your top five. And then we got a special guest we want to talk to you. Okay. Um, what's your opinion on parents who teach their kids curriculum or things that are, are are ahead of where you are currently teaching them in class i feel like that's great that's enrichment if they were in school they would be that would be aig um that's enrichment that's just preparing them for what they're already going to see next like if they already know the stuff that i'm on then push them along. Don't, you know, they don't have to hover or anything like that. Push them along, push them along. Their learning journey may just be a little bit more accelerated. So mm -hmm. push them along, whatever they can handle, whatever they can grasp, do it. Cool, cool, cool. So <laughs> um, something that I always do is I get my guests to tell me their top five dead or alive, right? And what that is, is you're going to tell me five people real or fictional, dead or alive, that you would like to sit down and have an intimate one-on-one -on -one conversation with. Mm. Okay? So, if you've never made it this far into my show, now you know what happens at that 45, 50-minute mark. Okay, dead or alive. Um, real or fictional. They don't even have real to be or real. fictional? Just okay. Um, one person, of course, I, will, I would love to see again is my grandmother. Um, okay. and just have um adult conversations with her. Mm-hmm. Mm. Five dead or alive. <laughs> Grandma number one. Fiction. Yep. Um if I could have an intimate conversation with them. And then anything you 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 get to ask them anything that you want and they're gonna answer it for you. They're they gonna talk to you. Oh man, I, that that's a sticky <laughs> question. I'm like, who I want to talk to? Who would I want to talk to? I, I'm stuck. Really? I'm stuck on that way. I'm really stuck. I'm surprised. I'm really I mean, cause, so so I help you out a little bit and give okay. you some of the ones, some of the ones that pop into my mind. Not for me. I never. I don't really get my top five. That's for another show. Okay. But some interesting ones that I have heard. Uh, of course, you have Martin Malcolm Obama. Um, Harriet Tubman was a good one. Um, Marcus Garvey. Um, my sister said George Bush, the ba baby Bush. Not not Daddy Bush, baby Bush. Um, um, Mamie said Superman was one of hers. Mm. Um, mm. So... I mean, uh, I've had people say Mother Nature. I've had people say God, Jesus, the Buddha. Okay, um, okay, okay, got you. Um, Libby, stop doing that because that's going to come up in the audio, baby. I'm going to get you on here in a second. Um, I guess, yes, I would... Um, I would want to see, like, you know... I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Really? I don't even... Wow. I feel That's like. Crazy. Is that is that bad? I don't want to talk to nobody. No, I don't necessarily think it's bad. I, whenever people only have one or two, I look at it. I'm a glass half full kind of person. You know what I'm saying? I look at it like that means that you are really fulfilled with the communications that you have and your day-to-day -day life or the communication that you have the ability to make right oh that's yeah. how i look at it however i also i know you to a degree so in my mind i'm like she's gonna come up with somebody that i haven't heard before so i feel like, like maybe because it's on, it's on the spot like yeah like i don't see that's why you're supposed to watch the show see you're right so you don't get tripped up <laughs> so i don't get tripped up oh man 
Because I feel like I, if I, I mean, I can talk to anybody and learn something. I, honestly, they even be more so talk. I feel like this is the most I, I talk. Like, um, because honestly, people more so talk to me versus me talking to them. So, mm -hmm. answering that question is kind of hard because I'm like, well, I mean, people just talk to me. Like, so I don't. All right, cool. You got a crush on Dwayne Wade? <laughs> yes, Uncle. Yes, sure did. Who said that? Yo, oh, first, I, yeah, I want to go see Dwayne Wade. Yes, I would have a conversation with him. Thank you, Mom. Ma. Ma know how to get the real, the edge the, the, of the, the, uh, Yes, I would have a conversation with Dwayne Wade. It'd be okay. like, um, Ah, that still that question still sticks to me. People, people give me answers, but if you ask mm -hmm. me that question, nothing, nothing is really coming to mind. Blank. Okay, cool. Lil says she wants to talk to all the parents of her future to the students that will help progress her business to full time. Yeah. So, yes. If you got what's your, what's your um, what age range do you you know um, are you lasered in on that you would like to have sign up for your your, your tutoring services? Um, of course, the the age range that you know majorly teach in pre K kindergarten, um, mm -hmm. first grade is right there at that point too. Um, I'm willing to do second grade through fifth, and that's kind of where I stop. Mm -hmm. um, just because I don't want to teach it wrong. Like I'm still, there are certain things that I'm still learning. I don't want to say, oh yes, I can do these students and I can't. I want to be honest about it. So I would say really between the pre-K through second grade. Okay. Cool. But cool, cool. I'm willing so, to extend to fifth grade depending on the skill. Okay. So as Libby gets older, we're going to need you to move a little bit up the ladder. Okay. And before you know it, <laughs> you will be a college professor. But trust, I life. am this growing. Been my teacher, my whole life. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely am growing. I'm definitely am growing. But for right now, that's the that that's my big window. Okay, cool. Do you got a fly that that uh people can put on a on their pages on their Facebook pages? That's what Honey Wordsmith wants to know. I do, I do. I have a flyer. Um, I can post it on my page again, and I can also send it to you if you would like yeah follow her you know what i'm saying if you're not following her follow her if you're not following me please follow me i like followers i don't believe in followers <laughs> i believe in friends I just, i'm a word guy followers follower i don't believe any of us fall lower than the other but you know it's not my platform um miss baker i appreciate you coming on with me i appreciate you teaching libby everything that you have taught her you have been an absolute godsend especially since we homeschooling you know, we love you. Libby loves you. If you ever need anything from us, you let us know. Thank and, you. And um, I always give my guests um, an opportunity to ask me a question. So, um, before that, though, <laughs> my wife said I have to show the shirt, and I don't know how this is going to work. Okay. But, um, because part of the prep party. So, it says part of the prep party. Yeah. If y'all can see the back without me messing it up here. Come here, Libby. Let's see. How can I do this? Can y'all see it? Can you see it? Yes, that's me. Can you see it? <laughs> okay. So you cool. see the so, top. Mm-hmm. Was they able to see the logo? Not the they saw the logo. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, cool. Give my chair back, Libby. You get you get your moment in a second. I gotta finish up here. Um, cool. I always give my guests an opportunity to ask me a question because you sat here with me for an hour and let me ask you stuff that you didn't know I was necessarily gonna ask. <laughs> so, do you have a question or any questions for me? Yes. What made you come up with what's happening with you, or what's up with you? Um. It's a couple things. Um, one of them, one of them is that I genuinely enjoy hearing about people's lives, hearing people's opinions, their thoughts, their emotions, their stories. Um, I've always been a decent listener, but as I started reading more books on communication and effective listening, it made me just be like, man, like I really like listening to people, right? 
And once I kind of learned how to listen without the need to retort, respond, either positively or negatively or combatively, and had the ability to listen to opinions that I disagree with and not have them trigger me, I was like, you know what? I think I can go ahead and start talking to people. You know, people okay. just whoever want to talk. And, and so that and... I watch, I'm not going to say the name because I ain't, you know, down in any other people who interview people or anything like that. But I see other interviewers who um, cut people off and also force their topics onto people. And I said, man, you know what? I think people genuinely just sometimes want to talk about what they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Right. And that doesn't mm -hmm. have to be what I'm interested in, right? Like, right. I, if you want to talk, we could just talk. So um, I will interview people, and if they want to talk about whatever it is that they do professionally, we'll do that, right? You're a kindergarten teacher. So if you want to talk about teaching kindergarten, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you could have came on here and been like, I want to talk about food. <laughs> you know, because you could be a kindergarten teacher and a foodie. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So if you wanted to talk about food, we would have had a whole conversation about food and touched on kindergarten maybe for one or two questions and then we would have moved on. Right. So, you know, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, can we get the shirt on your website? Yes, you can. And there are two new items coming out for the spring. They're on their way and I will post them as soon as they're here, but I cannot post them yet. But there is more merchandise coming and I am just, I'm just excited because more things are coming. Okay, cool. So that ends my portion of it. Libby, uh, Libby, you could jump on in here right quick. I have to, I have to give her the AirPods. Okay. So hopefully that transition goes well. So okay. if we happen to hang up or if it cuts off, we're going to come right back so that Libby can have her uh, session right quick with Miss Baker. Don't you try to talk Miss Baker to death because it's Friday. I know she's trying to chill. Come in. <laughs> So this is your left ear, right? Yes, Can you hear? Say something, Miss Baker. Hi. Hi. How um, are you? Good. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop the comments down so that Libby. Uh... Oh man. There we go. Move that out your way. You nervous, baby? You look scared. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me do this. Give me one second, y'all. Hold on, hold on, because Libby's shorter than me, so I'm trying to get her so that she can... There you go. So. How are you doing today? Good. Good. You come on Dad's show? You come to see me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here I am. Mm -hmm. I missed you yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't see you. It's okay. <laughs> You nervous? No. Oh, you look like you're squirming a little bit. Squirming. So I'll make sure you got anything you want to ask Miss Baker before she signed off. No. no. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I will see you on Monday. Okay. Okay. And Tell I like that hair. You got that purple in there. You know that's my color, girl. <laughs> Tell the good people say follow my daddy. Follow my daddy. And subscribe to the channel. And tap the bell too. <laughs> That's right. All right, Miss Baker, we'll holler if you need anything. You know, hit us up. All right. Thank you again for having me. Oh my gosh, I enjoy myself so much. Oh, absolutely. We had a blast. And so, real quick, um, what's next Saturday? Is next Saturday the nineteenth? Next Saturday is the nineteenth. Mm -hmm. So. This will premiere on YouTube next Saturday, the 19th. And uh, you, you're going to be up by 9 a.m.? Yes. You sure? I can push it back to 10 for you. 9 a.m. Next Saturday? Next Saturday. Mm hmm Yes, I'll be up. It might be 10. It might be. Okay. I had some people tell me 9 is kind of early. So we'll say 10, 10 a.m., February 19th, Miss Baker's early educational video on YouTube interview premieres tomorrow morning. You know? 
we got the situation ships versus friends with benefits premiering at 9 a.m. So y'all be there in the live chat. You be there too, Miss Baker. Hold I up. am. I'm Baking be there. The eggs. Okay. You said 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. tomorrow? Tomorrow is 9 a.m. Okay. Starting with your show, it's going to be 10 a.m. We're going to go 10 a.m. from now on. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So y'all right. miss. I see people just jumping in. Y'all going to have to catch this next week, next Saturday, the 19th at 10 a.m. on my YouTube. Marcello Bradley, what's up with you? We out. Appreciate you, Miss Baker. Peace. Bye.